Hey, give it up for Ritz, everybody. Give it up for Patrick. Give it up for Chloe. Man, it's amazing to be here. You guys having a good night? Make some noise. Come on. Man, listen, I am, uh, I'm excited tonight. Uh, I got to be honest, I wasn't excited about tonight. You know why? Because I'm tired. You guys ever get tired and you just don't want to do anything? Anybody ever? In, does anybody in here struggle sometimes you don't want to get out of bed? Anybody? Can we talk real for a second? Can we just talk real? And you guys like, I do not want to take on today. This is not, anybody? Earlier today, I was talking to a buddy of mine, and uh, he's one of my accountability partners. He was my roommate in college. And, uh, and the cool thing about this friend, actually, is when I was in high school, uh, there were these girls, and, uh, and they, they invited me to my first ever prayer meeting, okay? And it's my first ever prayer meeting that anybody invited me to. And I'm, I'm like a sophomore in high school. I'm like 14 years old, 15 years old. I don't remember. It's all kind of blurry, right? But they invite me to this prayer meeting, and I'm like, okay, what is it? And they're like, we're going to pray and I'm like, okay, but what else? They're like, we're going to pray. I'm like, okay, like, but what are you guys going to do? But we're going to pray. And I was like, literally, you're just going to come and pray? Like, just sit there and pray? And they're like, yeah, we're going to pray, and we're going to ask God to use us. And I was like, okay, I'm interested a little bit, because one of them was cute. And I was like, hey, when's the prayer meeting? And they're like, it's at 6 a.m. on Wednesday. And I'm like, 6 a.m.? Are you guys nuts? 6 a.m.? And they're like, uh, you know, Susie's going to be there. I'm like, oh, 6 a.m. I can get up at 6 a.m. And they had some, like, free donuts. I was like, donuts and a couple of girls that were cute. I'm not going to tell you, like, my motives weren't pure going to the prayer meeting, okay? I'm just being totally honest. Anybody ever do something with impure motives in your life? Come on, look around. Those without their hand raised, that's what a liar looks like. We're all here on equal ground. But at this prayer meeting... We started to pray, and uh, one of the things these girls were praying for was these two guys who uh, didn't know the Lord. They're twin brothers named Troy and Travis, and they're like, man, Troy and Travis need Jesus. We're praying for them, and we're asking God to move, and, and that's actually one of the reasons you got that card on your seat. It says keep five, because I just really believe something changes when we start to pray for people that need Jesus. I've seen this change my life, so this is a card for you to fill out tonight. And uh, go into the summer on mission. Okay, I don't want you to like stumble into summer. I want you to sprint into summer and say, man, I'm not just going to go into my summer. Man, I'm going to take the ground beneath my feet this summer. It's not going to be like every other summer. I'm going to live for Jesus this summer. Man, wherever I'm working, that's going to be my mission field. Right, if I'm home, I'm going to pray for a revival in my home. I'm praying that mom, dad going to come to Jesus. I'm praying, listen, whatever you got going on, I want to tell you. God wants to use you, but we're praying for Troy and Travis, and all of a sudden, Troy and Travis start coming to our church. Like, God's hearing our prayers, because we're praying, then we're putting feet to those prayers. We're inviting them, and these girls are inviting these guys, they come to church, and I remember my youth pastor, he gets up, it's the first time I really experienced the Holy Spirit, my youth pastor would be like feeling God birthing something, actually during service, and we'd be like, man, what's going on, and he'd be literally writing a new song while we were in youth group. And we'd be like, he'd be in the back, and we all knew, like, a new song is being born right now. And then he'd come up, and the first time this song has ever been sung, literally, he hasn't even rehearsed it. He's singing it for us. And one of the songs was a prayer, because he came to prayer meeting. There's a prayer for Troy and Travis to come to Jesus. And that night, these brothers, these twin brothers came to know Jesus. And actually, one of those guys, Troy, became my roommate in college became one of my best friends in college. And then when Pulse started, when I wrote this paper titled Pulse, Troy was the first guy I called and said, Troy, will you help me? And so Troy, like, quit his job. I quit my job. We started raising support. And so listen, like, God, he can move when we're praying, and he can move when we're intentional, and he can move when we're seeking him. And that's why being here tonight matters. Because community matters, faith matters, Jesus matters. And how many of you guys know God is on the move today? He's on the move today. And so today, I talked to Troy. This afternoon, I'm calling him. We're having this accountability moment of like, man, I'm struggling. He's like, I'm struggling. Like, I don't want to go to work. I don't want to go to work. Man, I'm having a hard time with this. I'm having a hard time with this. Listen, I just want to tell you, there are no perfect people down here. One of the original lies of the devil is he wants to keep you locked up 
thinking that what you're going through that nobody knows, nobody understands, and if they knew, they wouldn't like you. They wouldn't love you. They wouldn't accept you. And so you play this tape that says you're a fake, you're a phony, you're a liar, you're nothing. And you stay trapped up. Anybody ever been there? Man, we're all there. Like, we are all there. There's this uh, 15-year-old girl came up today. I spoke at an event earlier today, and she's talking about uh, some sexual sin in her life and some things. And she's like, I've never told anybody this. And she's like, man, I've been battling through this since I was little. And I'm, she's like 15. I'm like, when was that? Like, is that like yesterday? And she's like, no, like, but since she was really little. And I, I just say, man, she's been struggling with this sin. Nobody's ever known. Nobody's ever heard. And I'm like, man, I just want to tell you, God's moving in your life. She says, how do you know that? I said, because you're bringing it into the light. And she said, well, I don't know. I said, I know. Trust me. This is God moving in your life. You may not be ready yet to let it go, but you're bringing it to God. And if you bring it to God, he can take it and do something with it you can't do on your own. So when you bring it into light and when you start to tell other people, it's like light breaks into these dark places. The, the lie that we believe is proven to be a lie. So I, this is like my story, right? So I struggled when I was a teenager and I had like some depression stuff, and I had some porn stuff, and, and I'm like feeling like a fake because I'm in church, and am I a fake, and am I doing this, am I a fake, but then all of a sudden, it's like I started to get this group of guys, and we started to be real, man, I'm struggling with this, I'm struggling, and like, man, I'm struggling with this, and all of a sudden, it's like my vulnerability gave them freedom for vulnerability, and now all of a sudden, like we're praying and bonded together, saying, man, let's hold each other accountable, and I got a pastor friend in town, he calls it a, a 4 a.m. friend. He says, do you have any 4 a.m. friends when you're going through it, when something hits the wall, when your life is hurting? Do you have a friend you can pick up and you know they're going to be there for you? They got your back. See, Troy is one of those friends for me. And so today, we're praying together and we're just lifting each other up because he's a pastor in Minnesota and I'm here, this evangelist. I'm like, man, I got two events today. And man, I don't even think caffeine's going to get me motivated today, Troy. I need Jesus. And so we're praying, God, use us. And so I just want to applaud you tonight for showing up. I want to applaud you tonight because there's a lot of places you could be, but you're here. And I want to tell you, God wants to do something in your life tonight. There's a saying over here on the wall, it says revival happens here. I believe that. It happens here. You know why it happens here? Because Jesus is here. You know why revival happens here? Because the Holy Spirit of God is here. You know why revival happens here? Because we're going to get in the word of God together. And when you have Jesus, when you have the word of God, when you have the people of God, only good things can happen. It's like, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know it's going to be awesome because Jesus is here. And so I just want to encourage you right now to get your apathy out the way. To get your low expectations out the way. To get your been there, done that out the way. Listen, sometimes I think the biggest barrier to God speaking to us is our own doubt and our own like past prejudice experience. We say, man, I've done this before. I've been through this before. No, today is a new day. He's doing a new thing today. Though sorrow may last for the night, joy comes in the morning. Your heart's still beating. I believe today can be the day of your salvation. Today can be the day of your freedom. Today can be the last day that you call yourself by that thing that's tripped you up. And today you are literally going to walk out the grave. And that's actually why I got this jersey on tonight. Because, man, on, May, on, uh, on Monday, January 2nd, on national television, this dude, who probably none of us, me included, had ever heard of him. Because I'm not even like a, I grew up a Bills fan in the 90s. They went to four Super Bowls in a row, lost all four. And I was like, I love Jim Kelly, and I loved Andre Reid, and I love this guy named Thurman Thomas was the running back. But most of you guys weren't even alive back then, so I'm totally dating myself. But the Bills are like in this resurgence, and on January the 2nd, Monday Night Football, this, this, uh, this defensive player does a routine tackle, gets nailed in the chest, brings the guy down, stands up, and collapses. Did you guys see it? Anybody see it? Now, I know January feels like it's like forever ago, but literally on national television, it became the most watched Monday Night Football in history just because of this moment. Because literally, this dude dies on national television, full on dies, collapses, social media goes nuts. I wasn't even watching it, but my phone started to light up 
ESPN's lighting up, socials are lighting up, something's going on. I turn on my TV along with literally tens of millions of people around the nation to say, what's going on? And everybody's watching as this guy is dead on the field, and they are resuscitating him. They got the paddles out there, and they're trying to bring him back to life. And literally, they bring him back to life, and then he dies again, two times. His heart stops, breathing stops, and the people, you know what they're doing? They're crying out to God. This moment on January the 2nd unleashed some movement of prayer that maybe has never happened before. More prayer happening in a moment for a person than maybe ever happened before. And literally, the teams are on their knees, and it just unleashed this wave of prayer. Now, right now, DeMar Hamlin, he's been cleared. He's getting ready to try out to be back on the team. Like, he not only is alive, they said he maybe couldn't walk. Now he's, like, literally going to be in the NFL again. Because how many guys know you can't stop Jesus? Jesus can bring dead things to life. Somebody said, well, you got a Bills jersey on? Why well, you got a Bills jersey on? I'm like, you know what? I think, I think this is like a Lazarus jersey. That's how I see this. This is like, this is me rocking the Lazarus jersey saying, man, Jesus, nothing can stop Jesus. When we pray, when we seek him, nothing can stop Jesus. So that was January 2nd. February 8th, the movement continued to spread. Asbury, revival breaks out. It goes for weeks. The Spirit of God being poured out. Literally two weeks of a university campus. Nonstop prayer. I got to spend over a week there. Kids coming from around the world. I just want to tell y'all, listen, 2023, 2023, your kids, your grandkids are going to ask you, what was it like to be alive in 2023? They're going to ask you. I guarantee it. You say, Nick, how can you guarantee that? I'm guaranteeing it because the things happening this year have not happened in 50 years, maybe 70 years, maybe 100 years. The speed with which the Spirit of God is moving right now is unprecedented. And when your kids or your grandkids, if they love the Lord, they're going to know about this. And they're going to ask you, they say, what were you doing? Where are you at? There's going to be two answers you're going to have. One, you're going to say, man, it was insane. I was swept up into it, and it changed my life forever. And that's why your mom and I, that's why your dad and I love the Lord. Because, man, when we were 20, we said, God, change us, use us. And that was when God marked us and raised us up to do everything we've done. You're going to look back at 2023 as that was the year. That was the year. That was the GOAT of all years, because it also is the goat of all basketball players. 23, baby. Listen, it's 2023. That's for you, man. That's for you. That's for you. But listen, here's the thing. Or the other answer, the other answer is you're going to say, I didn't know about it. I was too busy. And they're going to say, what were you busy with? Dating. What were you busy with? I had really important economics exams. What were you busy with? Making bread. Were you a baker? No, that's just what we said back then. (laughs) What were you busy with? I was busy getting that drip. What? Were you a plumber? Listen, I'm just going to tell you, you're going to have one of two answers. Either you were in the wave and the work of what God is doing, or you missed it. And some of you tonight, I'm telling you some of this stuff, and you haven't even heard anything about it. Because you've been on the outside, and tonight God wants to invite you to not be in the stands. He wants to call you to get in the game. Because Christianity is not a spectator sport. This isn't about an audience. This is about an army. You are called of God. I'm going to pray. We're going to get in the word of God together. My theme for tonight is this. This is an invitation. Say invitation. Say it loud. Say invitation. This is the greatest invitation of your life. This is an invitation. This is not more condemnation. Man, see, the enemy and the flesh wants to beat you up at every turn. But every turn, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is welcoming you, calling you, inviting you to more. The devil wants to tell you you're not enough. You messed it up. You're a fake. You're a phony. You're a failure. Nothing. Jesus says, come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden, 
I have more for you. I have rest for you. I can't wait for you to come back home. I got something good for you, something new for you. I'm doing a new thing, declares the Lord. It is always invitation with the Lord, not more condemnation. Let's pray as we get into scripture. God, we pray that you would speak to us in this place, that your word would come alive. Jesus, you are the word became flesh, so may it change us tonight, not so we read from a book, but so that we meet with the living God. God, we believe that every word in your Bible is true. God, we believe that it is for our life change, and Lord, if you said it, we want to know it. We want to be like you. We want more of you. We don't want to waste the days we have down here on earth. So, God, speak to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, why don't you open up with me, John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Invitation, not more condemnation. You said Jesus talks a lot about two voices. There's two voices that we hear. It's his voice or it's the world's voice. It's his voice or it's the enemy's voice. His voice is always inviting The enemy's voice is always condemning. His voice is always calling for more. The enemy's voice is always telling us you can't do it. And tonight I got this ladder up here. I used to have a a ladder I would preach with a lot. And last weekend we had this event in Oklahoma. I want you to check this out. This literally, like not that long ago, Saturday. Saturday. What day is it today? It's Thursday. On Saturday at the University of Oklahoma. Again, what year is it? 2020. Remember it, 2023, it will go down in history. In 2023, at the University of Oklahoma, this Saturday, like five days ago, the largest secular university outreach event in American history happened. It happened, like five days ago. 3,200 responses to the gospel at a secular university. Backstage workers coming to Jesus. People outside the stadium coming to Jesus. Students praying, fasting, giving, going. I'm telling you, something's going down. You don't want to miss it. But the invitation here is for you and I to take a step and to put our trust in Jesus. Again, this is an invitation. This isn't more condemnation. Invitation, not more condemnation. Because this is what happens. Like you hear something about like read the Bible. And then, and I don't know about you, this is just me. But all here, like, see, that's your problem. You don't read the Bible, idiot. <laughs> like, I have a mean voice in my head. You guys ever have a mean voice? Like, if you're, you go to counseling or therapy, you say, like, there's a self-judge sometimes. The self-judge. And some of us, like, our self-judge is, like, it's like the greatest football coach on earth if that coach yells at us all the time. <laughs> you know? And it might be because of mom or dad. It might be because of a coach or teacher. But we just hear this, like, really negative self-talk. Like, so I'll say, I'll hear something like, hey, God wants you to share your faith. And I'll hear, see, you never share your faith, you coward. (laughs) Like, do you think that's God speaking like that? Do you think God's calling you an idiot or a coward or a fake? That is the devil. Okay, that is the flesh and that is the accuser of the brethren coming at you. God is always inviting you to more. But listen, it's this invitation, right? So every step of faith is, a, is, a, is, a, is an opportunity to trust him. How many of you guys don't like ladders? Anybody don't like ladders? It's okay. I hear you. You know, the crazy thing about this ladder is this ladder is like not heavy at all. Like this might be 30 pounds and it's flimsy like aluminum, right? And I'm like up here putting my weight on it. Like what could happen, right? This could be scary. But it's just this is a thing like faith does mean trusting in God. Now, I wish I could tell you that there was a version of following Jesus that meant playing it safe. It doesn't exist. Following Jesus means actually following Jesus. When the guy you're following's logo is a cross, you should know that it's not easy. Okay? The logo isn't a money bag. Okay, the logo isn't a mansion. Your logo is a cross. Like, literally, your logo might as well be the electric chair. You're like, yeah, that's what I'm rocking. Because your invitation is to trust Jesus and follow his example. Love like he loved, live like he lived. It's going to take faith. You say, Nick, faith means it's not easy. You're right. You know what it means? It means you have to trust God. 
if you can do it in the flesh, it's not enough. God wants you to live a radical missional life following him. Now, if you saw somebody coming home tonight, and they're on their, uh, they're, 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 they're like you're going home, you're driving home, and you get near your house, and you see somebody doing one of these. <laughs> You'd probably be like, that's a Packer fan that just moved in. No, but listen, but a lot of us in our Christian faith, this is what we do. Like, we just kind of like sit on this bottom rung, and we're like, I'm just going after Jesus. Just dreaming big for the Lord. God, you're everything to me. You know, but it's like you just see this, right? You see people who like, they come to Jesus and like they never grow. It's like the greatest thing in their life was when they came to Jesus and then that's like flatlined. Man, I want, I want every year of my life to be more Jesus. I want every year of my life to be more generous. I want every year of my life to be more boldness. Why? Because there's more Jesus. If you add more Jesus to my life, I cannot possibly become more lame. It is a math equation that doesn't make any sense. So why is it that old Christians are so often lame? Why is it? You know why? Because they're not following Jesus. You can't follow Jesus and play it safe. Every step closer to Jesus is like madness. It's like, man, really, God, do I have to trust you with my purity? Oh, my gosh. Talk about being lame. Okay. Jesus, I have to trust you with, like, my social status? You mean I can't go, like, in the club anymore? Like, Jesus, okay. But every step you take, he proves himself. He's better than the club. He's better than the job. He's better than the high. He's better than the girl. He's better than the guy. He's better. He's just better. But here's the thing. Every step closer to Jesus in faith will bring you closer to people who need him. You see, a lot of people, they get it twisted. They're like, man, I'm so religious. That's why I'm judging on all these pagans. And I'm like, bro, you're more like the Pharisees than you're like Jesus. You're more, you're more like the group that killed him than like the guy. Man, if you say you're close to Jesus and you're never interacting with people that need him, I would say, man, you're not actually following Jesus. Because every step closer you get to Jesus is a step closer to people who need Jesus because that's where Jesus is. He's still seeking and saving the lost. Now, this is not your invitation to climb this side of the ladder and just be in the club all the time. I'm like, I'm just reaching people. No, bro, you're high. This is, you are just stoned. That's what you're doing. You claim to be following Jesus, but you're definitely following the world. But that's why, like, this grounding in faith is saying, Jesus, you're it for me. So now I am yours. I'm a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. But this is this invitation, not more condemnation. John chapter 10. Jesus says this. Very truly, I tell you, speaking to the religious, judgmental ones. He says, anyone who doesn't enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. He says, the one who enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them. When he has brought out all his own, he goes out ahead of them. And his sheep follow him because his sheep know what? His sheep know his voice. You see, this is, this is it. This is where we got to get, get, get this locked in. Your goal is to know his voice. What does he sound like? I want to tell you. I want to tell you, your goal, and so this is every one of us. We get this, we get, we get confused. You're called to follow the good shepherd. You're not called to follow other sheep. You and me are down here like, what are they doing? 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 What are the River Valley sheep doing? What are the substance sheep doing? Manual Christian Center sheep doing? Such and such Catholic sheep doing? Your job is not to follow sheep. Your job is to follow the shepherd. We're down here distracted by other sheep when Jesus done gone a long time ago. He's not even here. 
We're down here distracted comparing who's got the nicest wool. Right? We're down here like thinking about everything but the shepherd. So number one question for you is, am I hearing his voice? Am I hearing his voice? You say, man, how do I hear his voice? You hear his voice? Man, I want to tell you, if you're not in the word, you're not going to hear his voice. If you're not listening to things that are pointing you to truth, you're not going to hear his voice. Man, you're going to hear something. Like, if if your life is full of noise, people grabbing your attention, if you're listening to whatever music all day and you're just busy all day and you say, man, I don't know why I'm not hearing his voice. Because you're not listening. Like, if you and I are friends and we never talk, we are not that close of friends. Nick's my best friend. He hasn't called me in like weeks. We are not best friends. I'm sorry. Like, if you want him, he's not hiding. He's not hiding. He wants to be found by you. Man, I think of it like, uh, how many guys had like a grandma or an auntie that could like cook it up a little bit? Like, you'd go home and it was like, it was on. It was like your favorite baked goods. It was like, I was at, I was at Walmart the other day. And I'm walking into Walmart, and they had this thing in the food counter, and it reminded me when I was a little kid. And I walk up, and there's this one lady from the Middle East and this one lady from Africa. And I walk in, and I'm asking their story. I ended up praying with them. But I, uh, I asked them, I said, man, do you guys have food that reminds you of home? And I said, when I came in here, it reminded me when I was a little boy, and my dad used to take me someplace. And the lady goes, you're going to need a very big bag. <laughs> Because she just knew it was like that hunger from childhood was going to be filled, right? And I think in the same way, it's like, man, when you're a kid and you're hungry, like that auntie, that grandma would feed you. And I think God is the same way. If you're hungry, he's got food for you. But if you're full, you're not coming hungry. You already ate. You ate everywhere else before you came to him. By the time you got to him, you were full. So even if he had something good for you, how many of you guys know, like, if you're full, even the best smelling food smells bad? Right? You could have eaten just garbage, right? Just the most nasty meal of your life. And then you come up to this, like, five-star cuisine. It smells gross because you're full. I want to tell you, you and I, man, we have filled our lives with garbage. But Jesus is the living water. He wants to satisfy our souls, and he invites us to more. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. Verse 5 says, they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they'll run away from him because they don't recognize the stranger's voice. This is crazy. Have we trained our ears and trained our mind to know the voice of God, to know that, man, where's that voice coming from? you got to take those thoughts captive. That mean voice is not Jesus. That's not how my dad talks to me. My dad loves me. My dad made me. My dad's proud of me. My dad's inviting me to more. So this voice that's in my head that's calling me fake and phony and pathetic and a loser, i got to put that voice where it belongs Back to hell. That's where that voice belongs. And i got to fill my mind and fill my heart with the word of God and the spirit of God. Because I want to follow this voice. Number one question, am I hearing his voice? Number two question, am I following where he's leading? Am I following where he's leading? Man, some people, they're not even listening. Man, I realize this, like, if I go any place, I've tested this the last, like, year. If I walk in any room... And say, God, is there anybody here that needs you? Everywhere I ask, he sends me to people. Now, I've been to Target, like, I don't know how many times, an embarrassing amount of times in my life. How many of you guys have just wasted days away in Target or Walmart? Like, just, what am I even doing here? Just, this looks interesting. This isn't interesting. What am I doing here? But it's like, I've gone to Target, let's say, like, a thousand times. And I'm going to tell you, like, probably... 9,990 times I have not had any divine encounters in Target. I've gone to Target, and I've shopped, and I've been busy. I've been preoccupied. You know what I've been preoccupied with? Me. My need, my busyness, my plan. The last 10 times I've gone to Target, 
I walk into Target. I try to make a little bit of time. And I walk into Target and I say, God, is there anybody here that needs you, that you would want me to talk to? The last time I was in Target, I prayed with six people. Like the, the, the checkout lady was crying. People are like lined up, wondering what's going on. You know what's going on? Revival has hit the checkout. This ain't no self-checkout. This is a Holy Ghost checkout. I just want to tell you, I think God is looking for those who are hungry, looking for those who are listening, looking for those who are willing. Man, all God wants is a willing vessel. You don't got to be perfect. In fact, if you wait till you're perfect, you're never going to do nothing. If you wait till you're perfect, you're never going to do it. You know when you should start sharing Jesus? The second after you know Jesus. The second after the blind man saw, he wouldn't shut up about it. The second after the woman at the well met Jesus, she wouldn't be quiet about it. We, for some reason, think it's normal to keep it to ourselves. It's not biblical. It's not normal. It's not biblical. It's going against the spirit of God. God, when he does something in you and does something to you, it should rise up from you to the point you can't keep it to yourself. And that gives other people freedom. Jesus says this, verse 7, says, Very truly I tell you, I'm the gate for the sheep, and all who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them because I'm the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. He says this, this is so good. He's, he's paralleling and showing us the difference. He says, the thief, the accuser, comes to steal, to kill, and destroy but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. I'm the one who lays down my life for the sheep. Two things I'm going to wrap with. I'm going to invite the band to come back up. There's two obstacles that I see as it relates to following Jesus' will for my life. And these two obstacles are true every single day of my life. Every single day of my life. These are the two obstacles. Nick, are you going to trust me? Are you going to follow me? These are the two. Number one is obvious. Number one is my sin. It's my sin. My sin is different than your sin. In my mind, my sin is worse than your sin. Just like yours is worse than mine in your mind. And if it's not worse in your mind, then your issue is pride. But we are all guilty before a holy God. We're just guilty. I don't share Jesus because I'm perfect. I share Jesus because I know I'm not. I don't share Jesus because I have it all together. I share Jesus because I need him. I share Jesus because I share good things. Man, I share anything that I like. I just, I do. If I eat good muffins, I will tell you about that stupid muffin. If I drink good coffee, I will tell you about it. Fragment is some good coffee. Blue bottle canned coffee is my favorite. I'll tell about anything that's good. A burger that's good. I'll tell you about a movie that's good. And we all do this. This is normal in the human experience. Jesus is the best thing. It's the best thing. For you to know me and for me to not tell you about Jesus is for me to be fake with you. For me to know you and not tell you about Jesus is actually for me to prioritize my reputation over your eternity. That's not me being your friend. That's me being your enemy. I may pretend that, oh, it's because I care and I I care too much about what they think about me and I just want to maintain the relationship. No, you don't. You care about your reputation more than their soul. They need what you have. And it's all how you do it, right? Like when I share Jesus, I'm like, you know, I was praying about somebody who's really like wicked and I thought of you. No. You know what I say is like, man, like I was just having this encounter and uh, man, you know when you experience something so good and so powerful and like I know you know this about me but God has changed my life and and like this is literally what I do everywhere I go. I said man I was out with my, this guy yesterday my buddy Carvin's here and we're out yesterday and I said man we're just talking about how hard life is and the server's like oh yeah life's so hard I said man it's so hard. I said man sometimes you want to give up. The server said oh I know and I said man we were just here talking about how Man, there's moments in your life where you realize there's a need for more. The server's like, yeah, totally. And I said, man, I've just realized that in these moments, 
I prioritize things that don't matter. And so I just wanted to ask you, like, is there anything in your life that you want God to do or anything we can pray for? Like, I just try to make it normal conversation to talk about God. It's normal. This isn't weird. It's only weird because I think it's weird up here. This is not weird. People, honestly, yesterday, no, today, earlier today, I was at this uh, jewelry store with my wife and son because they were coming through. And, um, and I asked at the jewelry store, the ladies are there. I'm like, hey, guys, before I leave, I just want to ask you. I know people down here are hurting and everybody's going through stuff. And, and so I just make it a point to check in on people. Is there anything that you guys need God to do in this jewelry store? And the one lady's like, um, we just really need more, like, positive energy down here. And I was like, Jesus is all about positive energy. Like, he's the prince of peace. Let me pray right now. And she thanked me when I left. Now, maybe she thanked me because I left, but that's beside the point. I just want to tell you there's good news. There is hope. But number one issue that keeps me between being used of God is my sin. You know what the number two is? It's my plan. It's my plan. I'm too busy doing me. We want God to bless our plan instead of us being willing to get on board with his. Every day of my life, it's my sin and my plan that are standing in the way of me being used of God. Sometimes our plan may have even been birthed by good things, but it becomes an idol. And we need to be willing to surrender and say, God, your ways, not my ways. Because how many guys know the best moments in life are the moments that God does and you didn't do? Those moments typically don't show up on your plan. You're not like, in 2023, in May, I will encounter Jesus. I will be healed of my addiction on such and such night at 9.35 at night. No, it is an unplanned, supernatural encounter with God. So do we want him? This is an invitation. This is not more condemnation. If you're hungry, he's cooking something good. And if you need him, he's here. I'm going to close, we're going to sing, but I want to close just with an invitation. If you're here and you need to get right with God tonight, I want you to come down front and um, I'm down here because I need to get right with God. I'm down here because I need Jesus. I'm down here because I'm not perfect. I'm down here because I don't want to waste my life. If you're here and you need Jesus, maybe you've never put your trust in him or maybe you've just been like one foot in, one foot out. I want you to come up front right now and join me down here. This is an altar tonight. We're here and just saying, God, we're here. We're out here because we're perfect. We're here because you are. We want you to fill us up, Holy Spirit. And Jesus, we want you to have it all. And you know, as you come, I want you to think about, man, is there something in the way? You come down front. Don't even think about it. You come on down here. This is an invitation. This is not more condemnation. Is there anybody who needs me? Is there anybody who needs to be restored again? Is there anybody who's been drifting to the wrong things? Is there anybody who needs a fresh fire going into the summer? You've been going through the motions and you don't want to go through the motions anymore. You come. is an invitation not more condemnation there's freedom in the house tonight does anybody believe that there's healing in the house tonight does anybody believe that 
If you're stuck in something, be stuck no more. Don't let anything keep you from getting up here. Say, Satan, I'm done listening to your lies. I'm listening to my Father's voice from now on. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that whoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He said, God didn't send his son to condemn the world, but to save it. If you're here and you need Jesus, I want you to pray with me right now. You can invite some of the prayer team to come on up and just pray over people. But if you need Jesus, which is all of us, I want you to pray with me. And we're just crying out to God. There's no magic formula. It literally is. We confess our sin and he's faithful and just to forgive us. We put our trust in what Jesus did on the cross, not what we can do in the flesh, but he did it. He already purchased it with his blood. He's alive tonight. He's alive tonight. And when we turn to him, he fills us with his spirit. The Holy Spirit of God fills us with power that we could be his, that we would follow his voice and his leading. Tonight can change everything for you. Pray with me like this if you need him. Everybody out loud, let's just pray together. Say, dear God, I need you in my life. Forgive me my sin. I repent. I believe you died on the cross for me. You're alive. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lead my life. Use me. Send me. Help me to not be silent. Use me to change others for you. In Jesus' name we pray. If you're here tonight and you're responding in some way, we would love to pray with you. You can text in the word revival to the number 73738. We're going to continue in worship. We're going to take communion in just a moment. I'm going to pray just a blessing over us. And man, if you're here and you're like, man, I need more, I want you to stretch your hands out. And you can reach them either above your head or in front of you or just here in a posture of receiving. God, we need you. We want you. We can't do this without you. God, we're not here looking down on anybody. We're here saying, Jesus, you saved us. So God, move in our lives. Fill us with your spirit. Help us to not waste the gifts you've given us, Lord but help us to be lovers of your word. Help us to be lovers of the people that are down here on this earth that, Lord, they are made in your image. Lord, they're not stuck in all these things because they're some horrible person. Lord, they're stuck because they don't know any better. And God, they're at the club or they're out in relationships or they're going through the motions in their job. They don't know any better. So God, we pray that you would send us, God, that we would be your ambassadors as though Christ were making his appeal through us. God, that we could speak into their lives and tell them you were made for more than this world has to offer. So God, raise up a generation of witnesses in every career path. Lord, that we would not be silent any longer. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus.